So let's talk about uh, something that's really sexy, and that's uh, resizing text. <laughs> that is so sexy. <laughs> it does. Well, you know, like, like I said before, you know, it's one of these things that doesn't sound uh, particularly interesting, but if your app depends on text inputs, text fields, um, you know, having text be the right size, then it's important, and, uh, and, and therefore it, it means something to you. So uh, we want to talk about re or scale, resizing text, scaling text, uh, and then we also want to talk about text boxes, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get a chance here, we'll talk about moving text boxes uh, as well. That's a, yeah, that's a really This is one of those topic. big topics. Um, you know, th this has been a big uh, challenge, the, the resizing of text or text not appearing the right size the way we wanted since, you know, native text boxes and text fields first became available. So with this new release for in the daily builds uh, for being able to automatically resize the text uh, to fit in your text field and text box, this is a really big deal. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. As of as of twenty five twenty, but daily build twenty five twenty. That's uh, that's when all the magic happens. So, if you are on that build or later, then what we're about to talk about will apply to you. And if not, then there's some tutorials out there that will help you accomplish the, the same thing, but it's a little more legwork. Um, and I think Ed, you're going to cover both of them, aren't you? Or yeah, I'm going to give a real quick run through, and um, I've also put together a sampler. So people don't have to extract the code from the blog article. So they can just use my uh, sample and take the module right out of it. And I've made some small changes to the module to make it a little more uh, not usable, but just have an, an additional small feature. So I'm ready to launch if you're ready for me to launch. All right, sir. Launch okay, away. So I'm sharing my screen. Can you see this okay? Yes. All right. So uh, the two things that we're talking about today are um, some weeks ago, back in December, early December, there was a blog uh, tutorial that talked about how to resize um, the text field such that you would resize the font to fit the box or the box to fit the font, which is basically the other direction. Um, and then there was another blog post here on December 16th which announced a new release which is what uh, Brian was just talking about where the new release now incorporates those same features as part of the native text field. In addition it, it um, automatically defaults to scaling the font to fit the box I believe. Um, so what I've done is I put together an example which again will be available as a link off of the uh, hangout notes and it includes a um, two different sample files let me make this a little bigger I'm not going to go through all this code because it's, it's rather lengthy and it's pretty straightforward it's commented so people can just read it and uh, see what it does I will I will give a quick overview uh, and it also includes a file called native ext, which is na means native extension. Dot Lua, and what this does is it um, it adds a new method, a new function that is, to the native library, which comes with Corona. So basically, you would require native ext, as I have done. Let me find it, as I've done right here. And as soon as you do that. Forever after that, the native library, which is uh, part of Corona, will include a function called new scaled text field. And it will also include get scaled font size, which are the two functions which were provided, let me go back to it, in the tutorial from December 2nd. So if you dig through this code here, you'll see that there is native uh, new scaled text and get scaled font. So and so basically if I, a little if, bit hard to read from there. If Go I'm, ahead. If I, so basically if I'm using the public build, current public yes. build or a daily build that's earlier than 20 what was it? What would you say 2520? If you're using a build earlier than 2520? Mhm. Mm 2014 2520, then you'll need native extension.lua to get this functionality. If not, the functionality is built in. 
and I'll show you how to use both. Okay. So um, my first example is a scaling example, which will show us basically uh, what I'm showing here is my iPad. And on the top, I have a box where I have, uh, let's see, yes, I've scaled the text to fit the height of the box. And in this case, uh, the second line down, I've scaled the box to fit the height of the text. And the text I selected here was font size 30. Uh, the third line here is showing font size 30, so it should look the same, and it does. Uh, and then this, uh, the, the next box down, uh, let's see, from the middle down, is the native scaling. So the one that comes with 2520 and after. And in this case, I've scaled the text up to fit the box. Second line is scaled the box to fit a 30 font. And again, the 30 font just for comparison to show that they're the same size. And it's probably a little bit subtle, but um, if you're looking at this very carefully, the box scaling, where the box is scaling to fit the, the font size, is a little bit larger in the um, legacy code that uses the um, that uses the scaling code, the native extension scaling code. So what I'm saying is, is if you're using a version prior to 2520 and you use the native extension code to scale the box, it's going to be a little bit larger than what you would get for the version that is part of the build in 2520 and beyond. And the reason is, is because with this one, you can choose how much border you have, how many pixels are between the top and bottom. And I believe the um, scale box, the, uh, the method that you use to scale the box in 2520 and after, doesn't have an option to choose how much border there is between the edges. In other words, you know, like make this box have more border. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Uh, a margin. Increase the margin size. So there might so, be what you're saying. I, 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 are you saying that there may be a case then where you might want to use that that other code? I would you think that if you're scaling the box to fit the um, text, you pretty much don't want the bar the margin to be larger. You want it to be sort of like consistent. So it's not a problem. But even if you use the settings as they are in the uh, the code from the blog post, your margins are going to be a little bit larger than what you see. For um, for the built-in feature from 2520 on, so it's not going to be exactly the same. However, with that in mind, I added a feature to Native Extension when I noticed this. And uh, let's see, where is it? If I could find it, it'd be awesome. Here. I also go ahead. I, I also see the the when I'm running this the because I have the demo that you sent to me uh, when I'm running it in the O oh, um, the Mac well, simulator. Can't. Yeah. Yeah, it looks it's considerably different than what you've got on your screen. Right. The OS 10 uh, still doesn't exactly reflect uh, what it's going to look like on your device. Yeah. Right. It's it's closer, but it's still not exactly right. <clears throat> For example. Um, one thing is, is if I had filled this up with more text than the width on the device, you get a little ellipses, but in the simulator, it wraps. Mm. So it doesn't give you at all the correct. The other thing you're going to see is the spacing is goofed up between the top and the bottom sometimes mm. on uh, in OS 10 on the simulator. Yeah. So people running this in the simulator, be aware of that. You've got to run it on the device to get the final, uh, uh, the exact um, result. So uh, in the original version of native new scale text, which is from that first blog post, the arguments were the X position, the Y position, the width of the text field, the uh, font size that you wanted, and that was it. But because I noticed that it wasn't resizing this portion exactly correctly, I modified the code and added another argument, which is uh, if you can supply it's an optional argument, and what it says is, is, how many pixels do you want the margin to be? So what this is saying, when I set it to 10, is saying have a 5-pixel margin on the top and a 5-pixel margin on the bottom. 
So if I wanted no margin, I could set this to zero, and it wouldn't come out to be exactly no margin, but it would be narrower. So, uh, and I'm not going to run it because I'd have to build it, and I'm doing this sort of like a complicated computer connection here. I don't want to, I don't want to crash anything in the middle of this discussion. Okay. So, uh, just to reiterate, uh, you can get this example, and uh, find the code. Sorry. And if you run the scaling example, it will run this code here, which you can step through. It's all commented. And you'll see this on your device. Okay. Old style on the top, uh, new style on the bottom. And uh, the code is smart enough not to run it if it, you're using an older version of the, uh, the Corona. So it'll, it'll not... If you're running with 2519 or prior, you'll only see this part right here, the, the top, top section. Part. Okay. Uh, so the other thing that we uh, talked about previously, and it's important for people to understand, is I don't remember when this feature got put in, but way back in the day, you could not put uh, native text fields in display groups. So native text fields will always be on top of everything else, but ideally you would be able to put them in a display group because once objects are in a display group, you have the ability to move every object into the group by moving the group itself. In other words, if I have an object that pixels 100-100 uh, and another one at 200-200, and then I move the group up by 10 pixels, it's as if I moved them to 190 and 200-190. So the value of this for text fields is that by putting the native display objects in, uh, and am I showing this? Yes. By putting mm -hmm. them in a display group, it gives you access to the ability to scroll your content. And I don't know if that's coming through. Yep, it is. By building an interface that takes touch inputs so what I'm doing, you can't see, is I'm touching sort of the blackish gray region on the side and sliding my finger up and down. And what I've got there is a rectangle that takes a touch input. And when I move my finger, it moves the group that the text fields have been inserted into. And if we look at the code, and each, what and I've each, done here... Each text field is still a working text field, too, right? Yeah, I mean, each can, text field so. is a working text field, and I'll show you that. Okay. Is I create a text field, and I insert it into a group, and then down here, I have uh, okay. I had to create a group, and then I create a bunch of text fields, and I pass that group into the builder, and then I insert them. So that's this group here, and I insert all these new text fields in there, and I do all my little doohickeys where I place them, and I put some content in them. And then I have this touch function, which is attached to a rectangle behind everything. And when I touch that, all it does basically is a little calculation to move the drag group up or down. And so what you see when I touch the screen and drag is that the fields move. However, if I tap in a, in a uh, text field, like text field 11, it pops the keyboard up. I can type some stuff. And then the way my routine is set up, if I tap the black area on the right or left, it automatically closes the keyboard and allows me to drag again. So I can't drag by tapping on the text fields. There's a way to do that too, I'm pretty sure. But if you want to put a little margin or a scroll bar on the side, sort of like uh, what we call an affordance, where people say, oh, there's a scroll bar. I should touch that to scroll. Then you can do that. Now I have no art. I have no art on this side, but if I had been prepared, I'd have put a little scroll bar over here. People can scroll, tap. But you couldn't do an overlay or anything like that, right? You couldn't do like no, a watermark. You water, cannot do an overlay. You can put anything over the text field. It's not yet. I'm, I still, I'm still holding out for the day when that's going to be possible. But what, what you can't see is here is I'm, I've got my finger on this text field, and I'm sliding it up and down, and nothing is happening. But uh -huh. if I touch off to the side, it closes the keyboard, and now I can scroll. Well, let's say that's an interesting uh, option because I know some people have had issues with uh, 
you know, text input, and then when they tap on a field, uh, then the, the keyboard comes up and it obscures the, the fields themselves. So, right. um, there, so there, there was a tutorial out there about moving native text fields up and down, uh, and it seems like this would be a, an option as well, where you could do some scrolling. You could just maybe just scroll your. Well, this whole would also feed into down. that because you could put all your display objects in a in a uh, group, and then you calculate from the, the, the code in that other article on uh, how much the group needs to move based on the keyboard height and you could use that to move the group all at once and scroll the content up so that it is all still visible. That way you don't have to move every single text field individually. See what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and hide my content here, go back to camera view. Camera view. And so, uh, this this is questions? a great solution, Ed. Um, I've, I had a group of students that were working on a business app last semester and, and used something very similar to this to solve that s exact same problem of needing to move the text field or text box further up onto the screen when the keyboard came up. So yeah, that's nice always been a problem. Solution. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. I run into it constantly because I've got, um, like for the Menu Me app, Lots of text fields, and dealing with that text input, I had to get super creative, basically, because I had way more text fields than I had screen real estate to show them all at one time and still right. keep them accessible. Yes. 